Welcome to Season 5 of Extreme Reloading. This season, we're going to be dealing with extreme bullets. But of course, we cannot load these extreme bullets until we prepare some brass. Now, we're going to start the season dealing with handguns. And so far, in all of our seasons of Extreme Reloading, we've really been focusing on rifles. This season, we're going to spend a fair amount of time on pistols and specifically the 9mm Luger and 45 ACP for the 1911. Now preparing brass for a pistol case isn't too terribly different than doing so for a rifle case. In some ways it's simpler for instance, there's no lube necessary, so that makes it a little bit simpler, a little bit easier. However, there's also the step that makes it a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult, if you want to call it that, which is near the end, we have to expand or bell out the case mouth to better accept the bullet and then uh, to apply the correct taper crimp in this case, or when we're dealing with revolver cartridges, rolled crimp. This is a semi-auto pistol cartridge, as many of you, probably all of you know, so we are going to be applying a taper crimp to this. And the taper crimp, uh, we're going to talk about that more when we actually get to that point, but it's an important step. You want to make sure that you apply the right crimp, uh, sufficient crimp, number one, to hold the bullet in, but also this is where the head spacing occurs and uh, we're going to talk more about that later on in the season. This is episode one and apart from prepping this brass, which we've talked about quite a bit with rifle brass, another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be cleaning this brass when it's all said and done and I'm going to have a little fun. I'm going to do an experiment comparing Hornady's one-shot sonic clean solution for cartridge cases. I'm going to compare that against Frankfurt Arsenal brass cleaning solution. I'm going to mix up brand new batches of each of these. I've been using this one for years. This one is brand new. They're both highly concentrated. We're going to mix them down at a 40 to 1 ratio with distilled water and we're going to see which one turns out better. You know, I like to have nice clean brass just like probably anyone does, but it's not really the end of the world if the brass isn't absolutely mirror shiny. But yet, I am interested in comparing these two products, so that's one of the things we're going to be doing in this episode. But before we can even get to the point of cleaning brass, we need to prepare this brass. So, let's go ahead and get started. Step number one is always to open a journal entry. I keep really, really detailed notes of all my loads and I've never thrown away any of my notebooks going back to the 1980s. I could go back and find out and reread uh, all the details about what I did in 1983 and 1984 and so on and so forth. So that's step number one is to open this journal entry, make a few quick notes about what I'm up to, and then we're going to move into case resizing. Full length, obviously, case resizing. Well, I've just wiped down and inspected 50 of these uh, 9mm Luger cases. Now, this is Sig Sauer brass. I really like shooting Sig Sauer ammo. Uh, it seems to be some pretty darn good factory ammo, and of course I uh, normally crawl around and pick up my brass. So uh, I've got 50 Sig Sauer brass cases here. As I said, these have been wiped down, these have been inspected, ready for the next step, which is um, full length resizing. And again, when you're resizing pistol cases, or when you're loading pistol cases, you do not need to lube. Not necessary at all. That's because of the uh, there are no shoulders on these uh, brass cases. 
So I'm using Hornady custom grade 9mm Luger full length sizing die and RCBS shell holder number 16. One down, 49 to go. Now these 50 cases have all been resized. Next step is I like to run them through my case length gauge. I use this a lot. This is a Lyman Easy case length gauge. And we're going to have to run it all the way over to the edge over here to get our 9mm. In fact, the only setting uh, smaller than 9mm on this gauge is the 380 Auto. Now, by the way, the 380 Auto uh, is actually darn similar in size, as you can see, to this 9mm. That one's just fine. And uh, there are cases or times when you're probably going to pick up a 9mm and other cases or instances where you will pick up a 380. So one of the rules that I have set for myself is to look carefully at the head stamp of every one of my 9mm Luger cases and, and really I want to make sure that it says 9mm Luger. There's also another possible confusion, and that is the Makarov, a 9mm Makarov. Uh, so I want to see 9mm Luger on my head stamp, and uh, that will eliminate every bit of confusion that might be uh, between a similarly sized 380 case uh, and an otherwise very similar head stamp of another 9mm uh, that um, Makarov. So that's kind of my personal preference. Just makes things a little bit safer uh, in my eyes, a little bit uh, more straightforward, I guess. But I'm going to run through all the rest of these brass cases, make sure they're of the right length. I don't anticipate any problems. So far, so good. Uh, and then what we're going to do, we're going to run over to the case prep station and just clean up those primer pockets a little bit get them ready to go into the ultrasonic cleaners for our little experiment this week we're over here now at my rcbs case prep station and as you can see there are five different individual stations here and today i only need to use one and that's going to be this um, primer pocket cleaning tool these little brushes right here I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and go through this. I just want to remove as much of the gunk, if you want to call it that, or the, the fouling that's in here uh, from firing. Uh, and remove as much of that as possible before it ends up going into the ultrasonic cleaners. And, uh, of course, we got one more step to jump back to the main press, and we need to be uh, bell out or expand these case mounts. Now we're back at the press and what we need to do is thread in our expander die and now we're gonna expand the case mouths of all of these 9mm Luger cases. We're gonna bell them out just a little bit. I'm going to show you how it looks before we get started, before we do the belling or expanding. And you're not going to be able to see too much. You'll be able to see a little bit, almost imperceptible. But you can feel it more then you can see it. And this is kind of a nuance of reloading, where what you want to do is obviously you want to bell it out sufficiently, but if you bell it out 
too much or expand it too much, what you're doing is you're unnecessarily working this brass and this case mouth and ultimately you're going to get shorter life and possibly you're going to crack the case mouth right about here. And that's not good, not good at all. So a uh, little bit of an art to that process, nothing too difficult. There's, it seems like it's pretty generous um, from doing too much to doing too little. Uh, maybe error on the side of doing too much. You'll get it just right with a little bit of practice and it's not too terribly difficult but it is an important step. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these then we're going to head over and kind of give these guys a bath. 50 cases completely prepared save for the cleaning. Now these 25 on this side are going to be cleaned with the Hornady brass cleaning solution while these 25 on this side are going to be cleaned with the Frankfurt Arsenal cleaning solution. You'll notice there are a couple kind of grimy ones I've put right up front in both sections and we're going to take a look at how it does overall. They're going to be going into the bath for 15 minutes apiece. Here we have 25 of these cases in the solution with the Hornady brass cleaning solution. This is mixed at a 40 to 1 ratio. Let's go ahead and set it up. This one will run at 480 seconds and if I give it two sessions of 480 seconds that is um, going to give us about 15 minutes. let it work. You know I'm also going to be preparing 45 ACP in essentially the exact same way. So while this is working on cleaning the brass I'm going to start working on prepping my 45 ACP. And now the Frankfurt Arsenal brass cleaning solution. This one I don't know if you can detect it but it has a little bit of a blue tint to it whereas the Hornady solution had sort of a green tint to it. We're going to give it again two sessions of 480 seconds and that will make a very fair test between the two. Well there we have all 50 back out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. On the left is the one-shot Hornady cartridge case formula on the right, Frankfurt Arsenal's brass cleaning solution. Let's take a closer look. On the inside, you know, they both did a fine job. I'm having a hard time really telling any difference between the two methods. I am seeing a few of the cases on the inside on the Frankfurt Arsenal that are just a little bit dirtier than what the um, brass was from the Hornady solution. Exterior is pretty much identical. I'd call it a horse apiece. Not very much difference at all. A horse apiece indeed. The only difference I'll point out is that the Hornady cleaning solution runs about $22, $23 for 32 ounces, whereas the Frankfurt Arsenal runs about $17, $16 or $17. So a little bit of cost savings if a person goes with the Frankfurt Arsenal, and as we saw, pretty much identical results. Now we've got 50 SIG cases all ready to go. They've been completely prepared. And it looks like we have a pretty nice expansion or belling uh, applied to all of those cases. Don't miss our next episode when we're going to start loading these cases and we're going to spend a little bit of time going through proper die setup to achieve a correct taper crimp. So I'm looking forward to our next episode of Extreme Reloading.